Anyone who's played football knows what happens when you take that heavy touch. You're going in after it. You almost can't stop it because you know you've made a mistake. A lot of the time we always feel England are going to go out there, they're going to beat everyone and win the World Cup. Never happens. Who is going to be that player that England want them to be? You've got Platt, you've got Barnes, you've got Lineker. Every time Gazza got the ball I was excited. There wasn't anything he couldn't do. It didn't matter what people thought about him as a player. They loved him as a person, they just took to him straight away. Everybody had sort of looked down on England fans at that time, but then Gazza sort of had this sort of jovial, jokey nature where nothing really mattered to him. Against the Netherlands, he kept going past really good footballers. I mean, this was a team that two years earlier had won the European Championship, and Ruud Hullet and Rijkaard and players like that couldn't get near him. And he sort of brought the fun, a little coif turns there, which arguably he shouldn't really do against Holland, but he pulled it off and it was amazing. After those first two games, I don't think anyone knew what was going to go on and happen. I remember the goal against Egypt. That felt like a little bit of a turning point after a really poor game. The press at home was now on his side. All the other players in the squad were always talking about him. And against Belgium, he just seemed to go up a level. After David Platt's goal, I think a whole country believed that England could do something. Gascoigne's ball was fantastic. You're sort of thinking, no, you probably want to take a touch. He's put it in the back of the net, and that's England going through to the next stages. You know, you have your, your clubs that you, you, you support, but when it's your whole country, we crave moments like this. He's really grown into his status as one of the best players in the tournament, if not the best young player in the tournament. I think the other players believed if Gaza got the ball, something would happen every time. Cameroon were a good side. They were very solid, but they had skillful players up front. Obviously, Roger Miller, who was with Gaza, probably the most famous player to come out of that tournament. Nobody could see that they were going to give us that much trouble. We have match winners in the squad, but then at the same time, this is England. You know, we're used to, to, to glorious failure, so it was, uh, it was a nervous time. Like you had people coming up to you who didn't even think cared about football talking about it, and it just felt like then the infectious nature of Gaza and that World Cup had really taken over the country. It's not just a game of football, 11 v 11 with a referee and a football, it's more two nations against each other. Back then it just seemed like everything stopped. Everybody sat around a TV screen watching that game. I watched the semi-final of Italian 90 in my mate's kitchen. You're looking at what's going on on the telly and you're going outside to try and copy it. And I think in that World Cup, everyone was trying to be like Gaza. Bobby Robson saying before the game that we need to talk about Lothar Matthias. And he's, he's more or less just turned around and went, it's OK, Gaffer. I'll take care of him. You go and have a cigar. He's probably given the most complete midfield performance that England's midfield has ever given. You can see straight away, it's almost before he's made contact with Berthold, he knows exactly what's happened. Picking up two yellow cards in the tournament meant a suspension in the next match. For Gaza, this would have been the final. Right, it was heartbreaking. It's still hard to watch because you see someone's dreams fading away. This is the wonderful thing about Gaza as well, that he performed even better from that moment on. Even so much where he gets the ball down the right wing and uh, Andreas Bremer just goes straight through the back of him. He just gets up and goes straight over to Bremer and shakes his hand saying, you're going to have to do better than that, mate. Penalty shootouts, there's no tension like it. I mean, look how many managers can't watch and look how many players have to turn around and can't watch it. And your emotions are up here and down here within a matter of seconds. When you're seeing Germany penalties going in left, right and centre and, and felt like England's look had run out a little bit, I think. The realisation that you're out of the World Cup and you were so close, that's what's so devastating about it. I think football changed forever after 1990 because there was a positivity surrounding it, which there hadn't been for a while, and I think Gaza played a huge part. He was probably one of the reasons why so much money um, came to England and the Premier League was created. His tears, his performances, he was front page news all across the world, and I think Gaza's tears probably humanised footballers to people who thought they were just louts. We want players to be as disappointed as we are when we get beat. I think nowadays you've got players who will sort of do a piece to camera and it's like, yeah, that's cool, but we don't really know and understand you as a character. 
he'll add a nation to connect with their football team, which, which for a long time hadn't been the case. He was like them, he was one of them, when at the time he was probably the most famous footballer on the planet.